Well, hello, students. Uh, this is Professor Khan. Uh, today, I wanted to uh, speak with you a little bit about uh, proper formatting guidelines for your essays uh, for my class. Uh, before you submit a paper for grading, you want to make sure that the essay is formatted properly. And uh, formatting is, you know, not really complicated. There's, you know, a handful of things you want to keep in mind. And I'm sure that uh, most of you are familiar with many of these guidelines. Uh, they're pretty standard across the board. Um, but there are a few things that I do want to call your uh, attention to. So before we talk about those specific formatting guidelines, let's just talk a little bit briefly about uh, MLA and, and formatting in general. So we're an English class, we're a composition class. We will be following the guidelines set forth by an organization called the MLA. MLA stands for the Modern Language Association. Uh, the MLA is one of many uh, professional organizations that uh, professors and scholars and researchers, uh, as well as students, uh, belong to um, those of us who are uh, involved in the language arts, in the study of language, linguistics, uh, writing, uh, literature, and the greater sort of humanities. Um, MLA is, is not the only professional organization available to people like me and you. Um, it's one of many, but it's one of the uh, biggest, one of the, one of the major professional organizations. So, you know, MLA has a conference every year somewhere in the United States. Um, they, you know, facilitate networking. They have a job board so people can go and look for jobs at universities. Um, they publish, you know, uh, uh, periodicals and journals. Um, they do, you know, a number of things. And any professional career or, or uh, academic field is going to have at least one such professional organization dedicated to it, I think. Uh, so MLA is uh, important for uh, people sort of on my end, right, professors, instructors uh, who work at, at colleges and universities. Uh, but MLA is also important uh, for students, and it's really important for, for two reasons. One, MLA, as we've said, uh, sort of lays out the guidelines for uh, formatting essays. Uh, and MLA also sets out the guidelines for citation. So when it comes time to cite sources, uh, in your work, MLA uh, provides the guidelines and the rules for how to do that. Now, uh, you will be creating a works cited entry, you know, starting with your first paper, and you'll be doing a works cited page for every paper. And starting with paper two, uh, you might be doing some in-text citation. Uh, certainly when it comes time to do outside research, you'll be doing uh, a longer works cited page and in-text citation. And we'll, we'll get to that stuff when the time comes. Uh, for now, uh, if you go into the module one folder, there will be a um, entry there, uh, giving you some basic information about how to compose the works cited entry for a short story from our digital textbook. And I've given you several reference guides uh, there in, in module one. And I'll go ahead and post that information in every one of our modules uh, down the road, since you'll be having to, to, to write a citation for, for every paper. Uh, but for today, let's not talk about citation. Let's just talk about basic essay formatting. Uh, by the way, you know, MLA, uh, like I said, is, is really about um, language arts studies, uh, all kinds of disciplines associated with the language arts. There are other organizations out there, and some of you may have had some contact with some of this stuff in other classes. For instance, there's the APA, the American Psychological Association. They have a particular way of formatting essays and they have a particular method of citation and it's different from MLA. It's the same kind of thing, but it's just different. Um, there's the CA, 
CSE, the Council of Scientific Editors. So if you do a research project or a paper in one of the hard sciences, like a physics class or a biology class, uh, your professor may ask you to follow CSE guidelines. So it's all similar. It's all getting at the same kind of thing, formatting uh, an essay or a, or a paper or a report or something, um, as well as citation. Uh, but each one of these organizations sort of does it a little bit differently. That can be a little frustrating, and I understand that. Um, but the idea is that they do it in their particular way because that seems to be the best uh, in terms of the discipline. That's, that's the theory, at least. So um, before we get into the specific guidelines, let me just say a few things about formatting in general. You know, why is it important to format your essay correctly? Uh, there are many reasons, but let me bring up the most, uh, the three most important reasons, at least what I think are the three most important reasons. Um, you know, first of all, when you format your essay uh, correctly, in MLA format, um, you're submitting an essay that is in sort of a standard universal format, right? Your paper is going to look like, at least in terms of its design, uh, it's going to look like everybody else's paper who has uh, formatted the, the, the essay correctly. Um, and that's really helpful for your professors, okay? Um, you know, even one class of Composition 1 has 28 students in it. That's the cap at ACC. And that may not sound like a whole lot compared to some other classes you might have taken or might be taking. Uh, but I tell you, from the professor's point of view, <laughs> that's a lot of, lot of papers to read. So, when your professor gets your paper, your professor wants it to be properly formatted because your professor wants to know exactly whose paper this is. And if we look at the heading, we will know exactly who, who wrote the essay. Um, we'll know exactly what class it is. You know, if a professor is teaching multiple sections of the same kind of class, uh, you will put that information in the heading. Uh, we'll know when the paper was submitted. You'll be putting the date uh, in your heading. Of course, you'll have a title for your essay there on the first page, front and center. Uh, you'll have page numbers, so the professor knows what page they're reading as they're reading the essay. Um, if a professor has to kind of hunt around to find this information or guess or doesn't have that information easily, you know, uh, available and accessible, um, then that just slows down the process. And, you know, instead of hunting down that kind of information, I would rather be spending time reading and commenting on and grading your essays. So formatting helps just smooth the process, makes it go faster, at least from the professor's uh, side of things. Um, the second reason is that formatting is, and, and this is true about citation as well, formatting is detail oriented, right? You have to pay attention to certain details and uh, for certain formatting procedures or, or certain formatting aspects, you have to follow certain step-by-step -step procedures. Um, and we want to know that you can do that, right? We want you to be detail oriented. Uh, and I hope all professors, you know, aspire to to teach that to some degree in, in their classes. We want students to be detail oriented. We don't want you to do formatting uh, the way you think it should be done or the, the way you think it looks best. We want you to follow the prescribed guidelines that have been given to you. Uh, you know, when you're on the job, when you're in your at work, whatever job you have or whatever career you're in, you know, when someone higher up tells you to do something in a particular way, you don't just go off and do it whichever way you think is best. You, you do it the way you're told to do it. Um, you know, when I take my car into the mechanics, uh, I want my mechanics to be detail oriented. I don't want them to just gloss over my car and guess at what they think is wrong with it. I want them to be detail oriented and figure it out. Uh, when I go to the doctor's office, you know, I want the staff there to be detail oriented, right? I don't want them to just uh, do a hurry up job 
and get me out the door. You know, I want them to be detail oriented. So being detail oriented is an important skill, you know, no matter what you're doing, writing an essay for a class, doing some sort of work in your career later on down the road, what have you. Finally, the third reason I'll, I'll give for uh, the importance of formatting uh, is that it's frankly kind of a litmus test. Okay, and this is related to the detail orientation thing. You know, if, if I open up a paper of yours and I see that it's not double spaced or that it's not in the correct font size or that you don't have a complete heading or that you don't have page numbers, um, I instantly can see that you're not following directions. You're not following these basic formatting instructions. And frankly, um, I see that and I think, oh, well, you know, Probably the content of the essay is probably going to be a little in disarray as well. So the formatting thing is a very easy thing for professors to immediately see whether or not you're doing it correctly. If you're doing it correctly, that's a thumbs up for you. That's a, that's a good sign. That's an auspicious sign that things are hopefully going to go well uh, as we, we continue to read your work. Um, if the formatting is messed up, chances are there's other stuff that's messed up too. And you're basically telling us that you, you, know, you can't follow these simple directions. And professors make note of that. OK, so do formatting correctly. It's not difficult. If you have questions about it, of course, please ask. So uh, attached to this uh, presentation on Blackboard uh, will be a document um, about MLA formatting. So go ahead and consult that document. If you need to, uh, a reminder about how to how to format correctly and like I say if you ever have questions about proper formatting just please email and please ask so this document uh, MLA formatting instructions not only explains to you proper formatting but it is also in proper MLA formatting but we are going to take a look at a sample essay and we're going to format it correctly walking through these different steps. So I'm using Google Drive. Um, I, I suspect many of you are going to be using Drive. Uh, many of you are going to be using Microsoft Word. Uh, of course, both w Microsoft Word and Google Drive, you know, have the same basic functionality in terms of formatting. There might be different menus and slightly different procedures, but I've tried to give you instructions uh, for both Word and Drive when it comes to more complicated things like inserting page numbers. So we'll take a look at that when we get there. As you can see from this sample here, um, you know, the, the writing, the essay stuff in here is just a bunch of uh, you know, stuff I've copied and pasted from various sources. The essay really doesn't matter. But if you look at the format, you know, you can see that there seems to be different styles of font in here. We have these different spacings between paragraphs and we have different spacings within paragraphs. We have different sizes of font. This is a bunch of just nonsense Latin here at the bottom of page one. All right, we've got some odd um, bold things every once in a while here the font suddenly gets really big you know here we've got a totally different type of font at the bottom so this essay is absolutely not formatted correctly and you know what that's fine for a rough draft you know when you're doing a rough draft you're the only one who's gonna see it no one else cares what it looks like if you want to do it in all sorts of crazy font types and bold faces you know maybe that helps you out maybe that helps you keep track of things that's fine that's not a problem but when it's time for you to turn in the paper you want to make sure that it's formatted correctly so if we turn back to our instructions we'll see the first thing is about the heading the heading and here is the heading Here's the information that we want in the heading. We want your name. We want my name, your instructor's name. We want the class name, including the section number of the class. We want the assignment name. And then we want the due date or the date that the essay was submitted. OK, so let's go back to our sample here now. Please don't be confused. We're talking now about the heading. That does not mean 
you will put this information in the header of a document. This is what the header of a document is. If we just double click at the very top, you can see the word header right here. Anything that we put in the header, and by the way, when we do that, the footer can also open up. Looks like it doesn't do it in Google Docs, but I can double click that and open up a footer as well. The header and the footer, these are spaces at the very top and the very bottom of a document, and anything that you put in here is going to basically repeat on every page. Now, we'll be concerned about the header in a little bit when we insert our page numbers. But for now, we just want to put the heading in at the top, and we just do that at the very top of our page where the cursor naturally begins blinking. All right? So we'll put in a name, let's make up old Joe Smith's name. We'll put my name. Now, I'm not picky about this. You can put my full name. You can call me Professor Khan. You can just write Khan. You know, as long as it's spelled right, <laughs> that's all I really care about. Then we want the class name. So again, you've got some wiggle room here. You could call this English 1302. You can call this comp, whoops. You can call this comp2. You can do both. Right, that's fine. As long as you put the section number. So I'm just going to go ahead and put one of my section numbers that I'm teaching this term here. So now that tells me, OK, well, which class is this paper coming in? Now, I, I should probably already know that when I open the paper. But you know, once revisions and things get turned in, things can get confusing. Then we want the name of the assignment. Again, you have some wiggle room here. You could just call it paper one. You could do something like paper one, plot summary, and the central idea, you know, whatever your pleasure, as long as you're indicating accurately the assignment, the essay number here. Uh, and then you'll want to indicate the date that it's due or the date that you turn it in. So paper one is due June 12th, 2020. Now, down the road, you may find uh, chances are you probably will at some point. You will find that you have to do an edit or a revision of the paper. So I would like you to represent that in the heading. So when you submit uh, a, a further draft of a paper to me, an edit or a revision of a paper that you've had to work on because it didn't pass the first round of grading, uh, please try to put that in here. And here's an example of how you might do that. Edit one or revision one. We can just use REV1 for revision. Okay, and then we'll also want to change the date, the date that you submitted the new draft in. So please try to remember to do that. Okay, there's our heading. And here in this first paragraph, I sort of summarize those things. You don't need a cover page. You don't need to have a, a page at the beginning that you know gives your gives that heading information, and that's all it does. Cover pages are allowed in MLA, but they're done for much larger papers than what we're writing, so you don't have to worry about that. Cover pages are pretty standard in APA style, uh, but again, you don't have to do that. Uh, I should. <laughs> this is this is sort of a leftover instruction from when I collected hard copies. I really don't collect hard copies anymore, so you don't have to worry too much about this. All right, your title, the title of your essay. You want to give your essay a unique title, OK? Um, you know, be creative with your title. Uh, it is common, not required, but common to give a title and then a subtitle. Uh, and the subtitle can either be on the same line as the title, or it can be 
on a line below it, you know, whatever your choice. Um, you know, sort of traditionally, the title is sort of the, you know, creative thing that you come up with to name your essay, a unique, uh, creative or interesting hook of a title. And then the subtitle really sort of gives us the nitty gritty about what the essay is and what it's about. Uh, we do not uh, put quote marks around a title. We don't underline it. We don't italicize it. We don't bold face it. Uh, we don't make it any bigger than anything else. Okay, so what I need to do is after my heading, drop down one line and then I want to center. So we go up to my align menu and we're going to, you know, everything else is left aligned, but the title wants to be centered. So we'll center that. And then we'll write something like, oops. Uh, I'm screwing up my typing here today. So here's an example of a title. You know, it's kind of a creative title that I came up with. And then we have a colon. And then we have our subtitle, which is, you know, sort of telling us a little bit specific, more specifically about what this paper is about. And like I say, this, this subtitle could go on the same line. If you want to save a little space, that's perfectly fine. Uh, the only time we would ever put anything in quotes is if we're, you know, referring to a story title or something like that in the title. But notice we're not making this underlined. No, no, no. We're not making this extra big. You know, we're not doing any of that nonsense. It's all going to be the same size. Now, we have to fix that, too. Our size for our font is all chaotic and haywire in here. So we've got to make sure that everything's in the correct size and style of font as well, that everything is consistent. Before we do that, let's take a look at our line spacing. So here's the rule that you can take to the bank. Everything is going to be double spaced, everything in an essay. There will be absolutely no reason to do single spacing or one and a half spacing or triple spacing or anything like that, everything, everything will be double spaced at all times. And that will include works cited pages. Everything on the works cited page will be double spaced. Um, any long offset or block quotations that you create, those are offset from the left margin by two tab spaces. But they're still double spaced. The heading is double spaced. Everything is going to be double spaced. So we'll go ahead and select all. We'll go to our line spacing menu. And again, there's, you know, all of these menus are present in Microsoft Word, just in different places. And we'll click double. Now let's scan through here. I'm noticing, and you know, I have an eye for this. Maybe you don't see it right away, but if you take a look at the title and the first line of the essay, there seems to be a little bigger space than there is between the first line and this second line. So it's almost like there's a little extra space in there somehow. There seems to be some extra space in between my lines of heading as well. Let's let's scroll down here take a look. If you take a look at the end of this paragraph and the next paragraph, yeah, that seems to be a little bit more than double spacing. So what's happening here is I originally wrote this or compiled this document in Microsoft Word, and then I uploaded it to Google Docs, and I'm, I'm editing it in Docs. Well, Microsoft Word, for whatever reason, has decided that they're going to put, as their default setting, they're going to put an extra space between paragraphs. Now, as far as I know, 
there is no style guide other than apparently Microsoft Word, Word's guide uh, that does this. There's no reason for this extra space between paragraphs. I mean, the reason why we indent a new paragraph, one tab space, is to indicate that we're starting a new paragraph. There is no reason on earth to put in an extra space. You might be able to tell that this is one of my pet peeves, right? So to get rid of this, if we go back to the instructions, here at the top of page two, I've given you some step-by-step -step instructions in how to get rid of this in Microsoft Word 2016, as well as there's a little extra step if you're using an older version of Word. Now, these are good, these instructions are good for using Word on a PC. Uh, if you have Word for Mac, um, these instructions might be a little bit different, and I can assist you with that. I have a Word for Mac on one of my computers at home. Uh, I've also given you the instructions on how to do it here in Google Docs. Okay, and it's actually pretty simple to do in Docs. So let's go ahead and do that. Once again, we're going to select all. We're going to go back to our line spacing menu, and you'll notice down here, it says remove space after paragraph. And so that's what we want. We want to remove that space that has been inserted after we end a paragraph and hit enter and go down a line and start writing a new paragraph. So we'll click remove and voila, you'll see that that extra space between paragraphs has disappeared. Now, it really, you know, can, this can get a little more complicated. Sometimes you have to kind of do this paragraph by paragraph. You'll also notice that one of the choices here is add space before paragraph. Sometimes that word is remove space before paragraph. So sometimes it's either before or after. And sometimes you kind of have to do it paragraph by paragraph. So anyway, it's it's not a huge deal, but I want you to try to get rid of that extra space if you indeed discover that you have one. Okay, so next, um, the margins and new paragraphs. So the margins, you know, geez, I remember back when I was in like high school, you know, using an electric typewriter and, and we had to manually set the one inch margins on all sides and all that kind of stuff. Well, that's all preset, you know, in Word and Google Docs and stuff. So you don't have to worry about measuring that stuff out. Uh, just remember that everything is on the left margin except for titles. The title of your essay will be centered uh, on your work cited page. There's a title, it's work cited if there's only one story works cited if there's more than one entry that will be centered block quotes those are when we take a huge quote that's more than four lines long and we offset it off the left margin that requires two tab spaces and also for works cited entries you will create a hanging indent for the second line and perhaps third line of your citation and i'll post instructions about how to do that and we'll, we can talk about that another time. Okay, in terms of font, 12-point um, font is the largest font I will accept. If you want to bump it down to 11, I will let you do that, although MLA really wants 12-point font. Um, MLA, I think, prefers Times New Roman, but I will accept that or Helvetica font or Courier or Arial. I like Arial and Times New Roman. Nothing fancy, you know, nothing, no cursive or any, you know, crazy script or anything like that. We want a fairly standard font size and type. So I'm going to once again select my entire document. And I'm going to go ahead and choose Arial 12 point font. And I'm just going to kind of scroll down and see whether or not it all took. Looks like it did. I notice a little bit of bold spacing here and there. We don't really want that. There's really no need to do that. So now that I have everything 
selected, I'm just going to click bold, make everything bold, click it again to make everything unbold. And that looks good to me. All right. Page numbering. Please insert page numbers into your essay. It's really important uh, for me, you know, to kind of keep track of where I'm at in an essay. Uh, I've given you instructions on how to insert page numbers using Microsoft Word 2013 and 2016, um, at least uh, the version of Word for PCs. It might be slightly different if you're on a Mac. And then I've given you instructions here for how to insert page numbers using Google Docs. So let's go ahead and do that next. Um, you never want to try to manually do this. You don't want to open up your header and try to go in here and manually insert a page number. Okay, that's going to lead you down the road to ruin. I promise you. Instead, you want to go to your insert menu. So in Google Docs, we just drop down the insert menu. Page numbers is one of our options. And we're given these various choices here. We want the page number to be in the top right corner. And we want, you know, page one to be on page one, not on page two, which is what this is here. This might be appropriate for if you're using a cover page for a document. We're not doing that. So we'll choose this one. And voila, notice the page number is inserted on page one. Scroll down to page two and we see the page number there as well. Page three, it automatically inserts and automatically does the correct page numbering. Now, if you would also put your cursor to the left-hand side of the number, click your space bar, and then just write your last name next to the page number. That is standard MLA as well. That's very helpful. Finally, the last thing I'll say about page numbering is that one of the sort of fundamental principles of MLA is that it tries to avoid repetition. It tries to avoid needless repetition. So here on the first page, we see the heading and again, that heading is not repeated on any other page, right? And of course, we see the title. So we look at this and we know this is page one. So putting page one in the top right corner is repetitive. Well, in Google Docs, we have a little checkbox here that says different first page. If I click that, the page number disappears on page one. And then I can just double click out of the header and it disappears on page one, but it remains on all of my subsequent pages. Okay, uh, there's an option for this as well in, in Microsoft Word, if you follow those directions. I'm not gonna be too much of a stickler about this, uh, but technically putting the page number, page number one on the first page is repetitive. It's not really needed. So if you can get rid of that on page one, that would be ideal. But again, I'm not going to, you know, count off points or anything <laughs> if you do leave it there. Okay, so there's one final thing to mention, and that is the file naming system that I like to use in my classes. This is not MLA, really. This is really my own preferred style. This is something I picked up while working as a technical writer, actually, for Austin Energy several years ago. Um, it's just a very easy and elegant way to name files. And this, this is really helpful for me because, you know, you're going to upload your paper to the Safe Assign system in Blackboard. And once everybody's papers are submitted, you know, I go in and I download all those things, all those papers, and then I upload them to Google Drive. And if everyone is naming their file name in the exact same way, then I end up getting an alphabetical list by last name of all of the papers 
that have been submitted and that's really a big help for me. So the way we're going to name our files is the following. We'll put a last name followed by the word paper and then we're going to spell out the number of that paper. So if my last name were Smith and I was turning in paper one, I would name my file Smith paper one, all one word. All right. So in Google, we can easily do that by going up here to the top. And there's our file name. Okay, please be mindful of this. This is one of those detail oriented things that, you know, it's ultimately very simple, but students are always making these three words or they're using the numbers instead of spelling things out. So I really want you to try to pay attention and do this as I'm asking you to do it. All one word, last name, lowercase, the word paper with a capital P, and then the number of the paper spelled out and capitalized, but all of these are in one word. Now, for a revision or an edit, I want you to tack on that information at the end. So let's say uh, I turned in, I'm Smith, <laughs> Mr. Smith, I turned in my paper, but it didn't pass. And so I'm having to work on a revision or an edit. Let's say I have an edit to do, and then I'm going to turn it back into my professor. Um, before I submit it, before I email it to my professor or share it through Google Drive, I'm going to put the word edit. And this is my first edit, the first time I've had to edit it and submit it. So I'm going to put the number one. Let's say I get it kicked back and I have to continue editing it a little bit more. I do that, I resubmit it, I change the file name to edit2. Let's say it's a revision, which is a little more of a complicated uh, draft that I have to work on. We'll use REV as our abbreviation for revision, one. Again, let's say I submit that, I get it kicked back to me saying I still need to revise, there's still more work to do. I do that work, I resubmit the paper, I'll make that revision too. Okay, so please be mindful of the file name. Um, it's really something that helps me out and helps me keep track of papers and you know what version I'm looking at and and so on and so forth. All right, so thank you very much for your attention. Uh, again, the instructions will be attached to this video presentation on Blackboard, and I'll be posting this same presentation with the instructions in each one of our modules going forward. If you have any questions about formatting, please let me know. Um, you know, if you submit a paper, uh, paper one, I'll probably be generous and extend this through paper two, and you make formatting errors, I will comment on them, I will ask you to fix them. But definitely starting with paper three, if you're turning in papers and you're making blatant formatting errors, I'm not going to even read that paper and that paper might even be counted late. So please make sure that you are formatting correctly. Please let me know if you have any questions about whether you're formatting correctly or if you have any questions about formatting in general, I'd be happy to answer them.